Hello friends! Welcome to another reading vlog. Um, it's actually Thursday right now but I actually have today and tomorrow and then the rest of the weekend off so I'm really excited. I was actually just planning on doing a regular old reading vlog. I had some reading plans but they have all gone out the window because the most exciting thing has happened to me. If I seem like I am very overexcited it's because I am. I just got the most exciting package in the mail. I have never been this excited for anything in my life and we're gonna unbox it together because I'm just so excited. And I literally, I literally can't believe. Okay, I'm gonna open it and then I'll tell you the story behind it. Oh my God. You guys, I'm, I can't, I'm actually screaming. Okay, they clearly damaged my book in the post, but whatever, I don't even care. <laughs> and look, oh my God, I'm screaming. It is signed, do you see this? It is signed by the Fonda Lee. Okay, so what happened was Fonda Lee hosted a giveaway on her, um, for her like uh, newsletter subscribers, which I obviously subscribe to because I'm, I need all the updates. Um, but so I just like entered it, not thinking anything because like literally I've never won anything in my entire fucking life, in, in my entire life. And then I woke up one morning at like, before my alarm, so it was like six or 7 a.m. And I like, opened my emails, like I rolled over in bed, I opened my emails and I saw the email being like, you've won, you've won the like giveaway, or, like art giveaway. And I was like, <laughs> I must still be dreaming. And then like, and then it like, pro I processed it for a bit. And I was like, wait, am I dreaming? Is this for, is this real life? And it is real life. It is real life. Oh my God, it's so chunky. I like just processed this. Also, you know that it's a great book when Ken Liu blurbs it. I'm just saying like two like one of my favorite authors blurbing another one of my favorite authors like it's just it's just meant to be this book is 700 pages long it's 700 pages long I'm so excited okay so the game plan is I actually just reread Jade City last weekend um because I needed a comfort read and I ended up reading it and so that's perfect um I do kind of want to reread Jade War before I dive into this though but like I'm honestly just so freaking excited I don't know what to do I don't know what to do what if I like read them side by side because okay so I did actually I'm like super chaotic I'm all over the place because I literally just woke up I just got a notification for this in the post and I just I like screamed I actually like came back into my apartment and I just started screaming like <laughs> I actually do have the audiobook for Jade War right now as well so I'm kind of like do I just like fly through the audiobook today um or do I just like dive right into this because the thing is I read Jade War less than a year ago. I read it in August, I think. And I still vividly remember everything that happens in it. Um, I think Jade City was a little um, hazier in my mind because I'd read it a year ago. Like I read it last June, I think. I kind of just want to read this. I don't know, I haven't decided, but I will I will let you know what I decide. Um, just as kind of like an update on Jade City, I know I haven't like reread it in a while. I still feel this a very, very much the same way for, as I did before. Like, I know on first, on very, my very first instinct actually with Jade City was to give it a four or 4.5 stars. And then the more I thought about it, the more time I spent away from the book, I was like, this is, and, and when I sat down to do my review, I was like, this is an incredible book. Um, and on reread, I feel exactly the same way. Um, it's actually interesting because on reread, I felt very differently about certain things in the first half of the book than I did on first read, which is super interesting. And like certain characters, um, their behaviors, like, I don't know, like I, I thought it was, it was very interesting going back and reading, especially the first half of Jade City. I don't know why it's a comfort read for me because it is such a stressful read, but like it's, uh, it's stressful in like the best way possible. I just love this series so much. Um, and yeah, and then, Jade War, Jade War is even better than Jade City. I can tell you this now. Like, I still think on upon rereading Jade City, I still think Jade War is a superior book. Like, they're both fantastic. Don't get me wrong. They're both five star books. But Jade War is just so much more special. There's something about it. Like, I talked about it in a bit in my um Chinese diaspora fantasy recommendations video. But there's something about the way diaspora is depicted in Jade War that it just it just hits so close to home for me. It is so well done, and it doesn't shy away from kind of the darker parts of diaspora and culture and I think that's what I love about this series is that I wouldn't call it grimdark per se but it does not shy away from kind of like the darker sides of certain things about Asian culture and like 
no one you're following is a good person. Like you're almost following kind of like the bad guys in this situation. Like everyone's terrible, but like you kind of love them anyway. Um, except Hilo. Okay, I can't, I can't blindly love Hilo. He's not my favorite. My favorite is definitely Shay. Shay and Wen are my favorite characters. Shay in particular is my absolute favorite character. And in I, nobody deserves Andin. They all fucking do not, even Shay. I love Shay. Shay does not deserve Andin. Not a single person in the Call family deserves Andin. Andin is the most precious baby. I, I can't, I can't. Anyway, I have been rambling on for seven minutes. Um, I will let you know what I decide, whether I decide to go straight into Jade Legacy or if I decide to reread Jade War first. Honestly, because I'm kind of chaotic, I might just like read this first and then go back and reread Jade War. I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think Jade War, the events of Jade War are so like vivid in my mind. I still haven't forgotten them. I still I still have not recovered from them. I don't know if I'm ready for a reread of Jade War, to be honest. I'm so excited. Anyway, <laughs> um, I will check in with you guys once I have some updates on what I decide to do or like what I end up start, like, starting to read, but we'll see. Hello friends, quick check in. I know have not moved from this spot since my last check in, but I did decide to jump straight into Jade Legacy. I just, I just couldn't wait. Like to be honest, I really just couldn't wait. And again, I do remember most of like Jade War pretty well. Um, there's a couple of like character names that I don't quite remember, but I think I know, I think, I think I'm okay. I'll like go back if I really need to. But like <laughs> the fact that the cast list is five pages long, like I can't, it's too funny. Um, but honestly, I'm on page 75 now, which means I'm about 10% of the way through the book. Um, and I don't usually check in this early, but I'm just like so excited for this book. And I, so far, am loving this book. I, I mean, did we ever doubt Fonda Lee. No, we didn't. But like, I love where we're going with this book. The book starts like about a year and a bit after um, the end of Jade War. Similarly to Jade War, if you've read it, there are actually like quite, it's, it spans a large period of time. There's time skips and stuff. So just keep that in mind when you go into that, um, into the book, just in case you are like confused as to when it starts. It starts quite a bit after. But I just, I really like the themes we're touching on. I think um, I can definitely see without like giving too much away, obviously I don't want to give too much away, but without giving too much away, I can definitely already see um, Western imperialism being a huge theme of this book. And I think given the way that the first two book progressed, we definitely saw a bit of that, but I like how it is kind of coming to a head in this book. And I like how the political tensions that we've seen throughout the first two books have really culminated in in what's happening right now politically in this book again obviously i'm only 10 percent on the way through one of my ships one of my main ships from this series is like frustrating me they are killing me i'm 70 like i said 75 pages in i've already teared up once like i don't know how i'm gonna keep it together for the rest of this book because i'm already like crying so like i don't <laughs> i don't know i don't know what to say but yeah i will check in kind of like at my usual either a third of the way through or like whenever, probably like end of day, I'll check in um, and let you know my updated thoughts on the book. But yeah, Barrow, I really hope Barrow gets what's coming to him. Like for, for, oh, for a second, for a second, I was like, am I enjoying Barrow's storyline? And then I was like, no, no, I am not. He is still a cockroach. I don't, I hate him. But anyway, that is it for this check-in and I will check in um, in a bit, I guess. Good morning, friends. Happy Friday. I am again, once again, not working today. Um, but I do actually have to go to my parents' house and I have to get some maintenance done on my car and get my oil changed. So unfortunately, I won't be reading until this afternoon, but I thought I would do a quick check-in and let you know where I got to yesterday. I'm now on page 209, so I'm approximately a third of the way through the book. I am hoping to finish it this weekend because I feel like if I don't finish it this weekend, I will not be able to think about anything else on work at work on Monday. So uh, <laughs> I am going to try to finish it this weekend. Um, I think I'm, I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm on track and it's also like, the book is so fucking good. Um, I honestly, I don't even remember what I said at the last check-in. I don't think I said, said I was just really enjoying it. The themes are really excellent. I feel like the way it's all come together is really good. I do have like one, not so much criticism, but like something that I'm personally just like, I don't have the knowledge or the lived experience to kind of judge is kind of the way the disability rep has been handled in this book. I don't know, I don't know. And I'm interested to see what, when the book comes out, um, 
what any like own voices reviewers or even just other reviewers say about it. Um, if you have read Jade War you know that something happens to one of the characters at the end of the book and they're dealing with the repercussions of that in terms of what that means for that character's um, health and the disability that arose from the event that happened at the end of Jade War. I'm trying to keep this vague. I'm trying to keep this as spoiler free as I can. I think for me it's like I don't know where I stand on it because it's not something that I personally can speak to um, and I don't know enough about it in, in all honesty. And again I don't want to say what it is because it completely spoils um, Jade War but um, yeah that's just something that I am interested in seeing what other reviewers, especially Own Voices reviewers, say about it. Um, as those reviews come out, hopefully they will come out. Aside from that though, um, the book has been phenomenal. I feel like I have already, I'm keeping a cry count at the front of my book. Um, I'm at three. Um, two of them I just like teared up, but one of them I full on was like just sobbing. And that was like at 150 pages of this book. And I, if this is the beginning of the book, I don't know, I don't know how I'm gonna make it to the end. Like I really, I don't, I just don't know. Um, <laughs> It has been such an emotional roller coaster already. Like, if you, again, if you've read Jade War, think like the last third of Jade War, or not even the last third, but the last half of Jade War, and like what a what a ride! Like what an emotional roller coaster of a ride that was. That has been this entire book so far. This entire book so far has just been ups and downs and ups and downs, and it's just like, it's a lot. It's a lot for my my sanity, you know? Um, um, I will say there's, there's been a lot of time skips. Like, um, at one point there was like a seven year time skip, maybe a six year time skip, six years, I think. I do like that they have kind of put, whenever there is a large time skip, it does actually tell you what year it, it, it is in whenever there's a huge chain, like shift in time, um, which I do appreciate. I can't remember if that was the case in Jade War. I don't feel like it was personally, um, but I do appreciate it here because like I said, the time skips are quite large. So instead of like having to give context clues as to just how many years it's been, I like having that exact number so that I can contextualize in my head and, and visualize in my head how old these characters are. Like I think at the point where I'm at now, like Andin is like thir a 31 year old grown man. Like what happened to my baby Andin? Like I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. He is a 31 year old man now. So like, I don't, I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, but I do, I really like where the book is going. I feel like in terms of the world, Jade City was very much like a very um, honed in look at, at, Jan Loon and that specific city and, and you got a little glimpse of that city and that country's relations with other countries but you really only got a glimpse of that city and then in book two we got to see a diaspora we got to see um the Kikinese Espenian diaspora um in another country and I thought that was really cool and then in book three what we've done is we've taken we've not only taken it global but even within the countries we've been in so far the countries we've explored in both Jade City and Jade War we've been concentrated in one city and we have now explored expanded into other cities in those countries as well and I just think that is I just think the progression of like how we've expanded the world and how Honda Lee has kind of incrementally expanded this world um but not in a way that like feels overwhelming because like you knew these cities existed you've known these countries existed because of like their relation to the place you've been kind of focused on um, so it's not like these places and these these relations they are surprises to you. You've just never up until this point kind of gone in depth with it. And I just think that's so master. The way that she's done it is so well done. Hi, Kava. Um, so I really, really like it. As always, I think, I, I really do think at this point, like Fonda Lee is probably one of the most masterful world builders um, that I have personally read in, in adult fantasy. I think her world building is like, next to none. It's fantastic. It's phenomenal. I just, I can't, I cannot sing enough praises. Like, I'll be honest, if you're looking for some sort of unbiased review of this book, this is probably not the place for it. I am just so emotionally attached to these characters, so invested. And I just like also the characters, um, their situation, their culture just resonates with me personally so much that like, I, I do feel like I'm a little unable to give like an uh, an unbiased quote unquote review of this book. I do feel like in the grand scheme of this series so far anyway, this book is definitely giving me everything I wanted more. Like there's not, I don't know, like I, I had predictions going into it. 
I don't know, like I feel like I have seen some of the things I predicted sort of come to life, but also there's just been so much. There's so much more that I d never even thought would happen or that I expected. And like, again, I'm only in the first third of the book. So like, I'm just, I'm like so baffled at, and like in awe of like how Fondelli has managed to like weave this all in, in a way that makes sense. It flows. It doesn't feel overwhelming or clunky. I don't know. Like it's just, in it's, it's wild. It's wild. Like the fact that there's a cast list of that takes up five pages and you don't feel overwhelmed and you feel like you know these characters is just like, it's, it's, it's such an accomplishment. I don't know. Like, I don't know what to say. Um, anyway, I actually, I have to head out now, but I will check in probably later tonight or maybe tomorrow, um, and let you know where I get to today. Or I, I mean, prob I'll probably just check in with you when I'm at like the kind of like two third mark. Um, do my like usual check in structure, but, um, unless I like have urgent updates, <laughs> this is definitely hopefully shaping up to be a five star read. It definitely has those feels again. It just, I'm just so emotionally attached to these characters that like, I do automatically get those like feels, you know, the five star feels. Um, anyway, I've talked long enough. I will check in later. What the fuck did I just read? I... I, I don't, I don't have words. This is not going to be a long check-in. I just, I don't know. I don't know what just fucking happened. I am in shock. The world is not ready for this book. I am not ready for this book. Fonda Lee, Fonda Lee. I really, like, every, every expectation I had for this book Fonda Lee has said fuck you too and in the best way possible I I I cannot I actually cannot process what just fucking happened I really don't think the world is ready for this book whatever predictions whatever theories you had for this book whatever you thought you knew about this book you don't know it you don't know what like Fonda Lee really her brain her brain knows no limits. Her brain knows no limits. I, I'm actually, <laughs> I can't, I can't function right now. I cannot believe what I just fucking read. This book is everything. This book is everything I didn't know I needed. I don't know why I decided to check in because I have nothing coherent to say other than I was not ready. I was not ready for this book. I thought I was, I was not. I, I most certainly, was not. Anyway, I will check in sometime tomorrow probably um, and give you updated thoughts because I don't really have updated thoughts. I just needed to like get, I, I just needed to give a quick update to just express how fucking unpredictable this book is. Truly, truly so unpredictable and in the best way possible. Anyway, that's it for now. Good night. Hello friends, happy Sunday. Um, it is currently like almost 3.30 and I actually have to head out to get some groceries now so that I can get food in for dinner. I am just over halfway of Jade Legacy now and I just wanted to quickly give an update on Nico in particular. One of my, I guess I probably should have talked about like my predictions going into this, but I feel like I've talked about predictions before on like live streams and stuff. Um, so I kind of just like forgot about it. But one of my biggest predictions going into Jade Legacy was that Nico was going to find out what Hilo did in Jade War. Again, I'm going to keep this as vague as possible, but if you know, you know. But one of my biggest things and predictions of like what was going to happen in Jade Legacy was that um, especially after knowing that Jade Legacy spans so many years and we get to see the kids grow up, was that Nico is, was going to find out eventually what Hilo did in Jade War and that that was going to come around and bite Hilo in the ass and that Nico was eventually going to be, one way or another, the downfall of No P Clan. That's like my biggest prediction and I still don't know if that's actually going to happen. But I w what I will say is that Nico's character arc, this book, entire book, has simultaneously been exactly what I predicted, but also not at all what I predicted. So like, I'm just like, <laughs> I don't know how it's at the same time, both of those things, but it's just very interesting to see his character play out 
especially given like the strong feelings I got in terms of like my predictions going into this book toward like and, and also like towards the end of um Jade War how I felt like I wanted his character to go and his character development and actually all of the kids character development Jaya has had like the least character development but she is the youngest daughter um so like at the point where I'm at in the book now she's still fairly young she's still like um in high school um but Rue and Nico's characters have been very interesting. It's been very interesting to see them grow up and to follow them. Um, I have been really enjoying seeing that a lot. I actually can see some people finding the time skips jarring. Um, they are pretty significant time skips. Um, but for me personally, I really like it. I really like seeing our characters grow old. And like, like Hilo at this point is like in his 40s, right? Like at the point where I'm at now, um, or at least like 40 ish. Um, and I've really liked seeing him mature and develop as a character. Um, I still think he's trash. I think he's a trash human being, but like his character is so interesting. Um, Shay has also been really interesting to see grow. I think she definitely played a more prominent role in kind of like the first third of the book. Um, she's kind of not as prominent in the part I'm at now. Um, I do hope we get a little bit more of her just because she is my favorite character. I hope we get to see more of her and Andin as well. Like Andin's character, I think I would argue from the beginning of Jade City up until the point where I'm at now in Jade Legacy. But even like if you've read the first two books, I feel like you would agree with me when I say, I think Andin's character has had the most drastic growth as a character across this entire story. And I am scared to see what happens to him because like, I just adore him so much and I just want all the good things for him, but I, um, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm very scared to s for like what is going to happen to him. Anyway, um, I'm going to go get groceries now, but I just wanted to, to do that quick check in just to kind of give you an update on like the character arcs and like just, I'm, I'm really enjoy. I feel like I haven't talked too much about character growth yet, um, but I'm really enjoying the character work that, that Fonda Lee has put into this book so far. I just think it's phenomenal. I, this book is, this book is everything. Um, I'm going to shut up now. Otherwise, honestly, this vlog at this point is going to be like an hour long. It's just gonna be like an hour long gush fest, but I guess that's probably what you all expected anyway. So like, it's fine. Um, anyway, I will check in maybe at the end of the day, maybe tomorrow. We'll see. It's so weird to me that it is Saturday because like I've already had two days off and like this is my four third day off. So like <laughs> it feels really weird. Um, but I do still have Sunday off. So that's really exciting. Um, but I am hoping to get some more reading done tonight. Um, but I do. I, I, yeah. But like I said, I do have to get groceries, get some dinner on um, and hopefully read some more. Why must Fonda Lee do this to me? I'm so upset. <laughs> we're at we're at six for the cry count now. I oh, this book has wrecked me. I am about 150 pages from the end. Um, probably will finish it today. What time is it? It's like 3:30 p.m. on Sunday. I'm. I probably will have to finish it today. Like, I don't think I cannot finish it. Oh, Fonda Lee, why? 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 I'm so upset. So much happens. There's like no room to breathe, except there is. But, but like, whenever there's like a lull in like stress, you're just, you just know something bad is about to happen. And it's just like, pain. It's like constant pain. I love this book so much. Anyway, I just w thought I would do a quick check-in and let you know that I am emotionally drained from this reading experience in the best way possible. Again, this book is everything I wanted and more. I know I keep saying that, but I can't, I can't stress enough how much this book has exceeded every expectation I had of it. And trust me, I had very high expectations. Like, I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna wrap up in the next 150 pages. Like I really don't. Like there's so many threads right now going that like, I mean, I know she'll wrap them up, but like, I just don't know how exactly it's gonna happen. So like, well, anyway, I guess I should get back to reading and 
I will check in with you one last time when I have finished Jade Legacy. Hello, friends. It is 11.40 p.m. on Sunday, and I have finished Jade Legacy. I actually want to cry. The fact that it's over. I'm so sad. <laughs> I'm actually... Oh. I am so sad that this series is over, and yet I am just so incredibly, like, satisfied by the ending. First of all, this book has cemented this series as... Probably, in my opinion, the best adult fantasy series I have ever read. And that currently, I think this is the best series. Completed series, anyway. I cannot express to you, again, like how much this series means to me. I have done a number of videos where I've talked about the first two books already. And I talk about how much this book resonates with me and the characters resonate with me especially Shay and her character arc just really spoke to me and like I just there was so much that I related to um and culturally there's just so much that I relate to as well um the good and the bad and then in Jade War of course we saw like the diaspora um and that also meant a lot to me I think I talk about that in one of my videos as well um and this book just like, again, solidifies how much I love this series and how much I love these characters and how Fonda Lee just really manages to make you feel like you are part of this family. And I know that this series is sold as like, oh, gang violence and like gang, you know, gang wars and stuff like that. And it is. And that that is kind of the plot of the book, but fundamentally at the heart of this series, this is a family saga. This is a family drama. This book starts and ends with family, and I love that about it. What makes this book and this series so special is how the family dynamics are portrayed and how the calls are an incredibly flawed family. And yet, they are such a strong family, and I just, there's so much that I relate to. Oh, I'm so, I'm so sad. I'm so sad it's over. I don't really have too much more to say that's like non-spoilery. I will say there's a lot of things that didn't play out the way I thought they would. And in, in, in some sense, they actually didn't play out the way that I almost like wanted them to. But the way that Fonda Lee does it is so satisfying in the end that I don't even care that it wasn't the ending that I wanted per se. It is the ending that I feel is right for these characters, for this family. And I think this title of like Jade Legacy is so like, is so fitting because that is the overarching theme of this book, right? Like, and this series is about the legacy of this family. And this is truly like an intergenerational story. You have the legacy that the grandparents left behind after, you know, after the, what's it called? The Many Nations War. Um, the legacy that they left the generation that we've primarily been following, um, Hilo, Lan, um, Andin, and Shay, that the legacy that they were left behind, but also the legacy that they are leaving behind for their children. And it is just so, it's so well done. It is such a well executed series. And I think what this book does really well is like not only showing the growth that these characters have within themselves, but also at, on a societal level, like how globalization and how the Kikinese people have changed over time and and how their society has changed and how their perceptions of the Greenbone clans have changed. And I th I think like that theme, that theme of like growth both on like a macro and micro level is just so well executed, so well executed. Shockingly, by the end of this book, I would say like, if you asked me in book one who my favorite character was, it, it was 100% Shay, like no doubt about it. But by the end of book two, I would have said like Shay and like probably Andin were my favorite characters. And I did not like Hilo. I did not get the hype around Hilo. By the end of this book, in terms of overall character arc and growth from book one all the way to the end of book two in this entire series, I actually think that Hilo has one of my favorite character arcs of all time. His growth is incredible. The way that his character grows is so realistic and 
it's just so well executed. It's so incredibly well executed. This book is so emotional and it is so incredibly well paced. Like this book is literally technically perfect in every way that I can think of. Like I think about like other series that I consider like all time favorites that have completed. So I'm thinking like, you know, the Broken Earth trilogy, um, the Poppy War series. And those are series that I absolutely adore. But there are certain things, especially like when I talk about the Poppy War, I've talked about at length before how I love that series so much and they're all five star books for me but I definitely do see like you know pacing is not my favorite in that series it, but I love that series so much and I love the characters so much and the themes and the history behind it so much that it, it doesn't matter to me but with the Greenbone Saga and specifically with Jade Legacy it's perfect like everything is executed so incredibly well the pacing in this book is fantastic like this is a 700 page book which I read in approximately like four days I just could not put it down it was so well done and like Kondali has does this really great thing and she does she does it in the first two books as well where she has the perfect I feel I for me personally the perfect amount of like action scenes to politics um it is very politics heavy I will say that like if you read Jade City and Jade War um you'll know that Jade War is a lot more politics heavy than Jade City was um this book in terms of pacing um, in terms of like the politics and action divide is probably closer to Jade War than Jade City. Um, I still feel like there's enough action scenes to keep you interested if you are more of an action heavy kind of person. There's something about the way that this book is paced that like even in kind of the quieter moments you cannot sit still and you cannot feel calm because you just know something else is gonna happen soon and it's just I don't know something about that and the way that it mirrors almost like the way that they are constantly like on their toes and constantly looking out for threats like I don't know I feel like that kind of mimics the way that they're feeling I don't maybe I'm just reading too much into it and I'm just like way too emotionally attached to all these characters I don't, I don't even know but because of the way that this book is written the way that it's paced it just keeps you so engaged the entire time and again like I said like these characters they're just like everything they feel I feel like I'm feeling and like it's just so emotional my final cry count if anyone was interested is approximately 10 that's the official tally I have I mean of those 10 I'd say like most of them I was like tearing up at I wasn't like full-on sobbing but I'd say like three four of them were like full-on sobs I like sobbed I know that she is coming out with like a novella in this world and like maybe some short stories or something um which I'm very excited I'm very excited to you know just be back in this world uh one last time almost um but I don't know this was not a very coherent kind of reading vlog it's really just me gushing about this I once again if you have not pre-ordered this pre-order it um if you have not started the series please 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 start the series I implore you it is just so incredibly good um it's just I love this series so much I I have nothing bad to say about it like I said it's technically flawless like in terms of the writing this series I feel like more so than any other series just means so much to me personally because of this like emotional connection I feel with the characters. I'll, I'll just shut up now because I feel like I've said all I need to say right now about this book. Um, obviously it doesn't come out until November 30th so um, I'm not gonna, I don't want to like say too much about it. Um, I think what I will do is similarly to The Burning God, once the book actually comes out um, I'll give it like a couple of weeks so that people can read it um, and then I will post a full kind of like spoilery book chat about this book just discussing the ending all the threads that were like tied back together at the end like it was just so well executed like Fondly really like set things up in a way that I think paid off in the end so well and I just anyway that is it for this video for this vlog that is it for the Greenbone Saga <sighs> anyway um I hope you liked this video I hope you liked experiencing this the, the masterpiece that is Jade Legacy with me um and I hope you're as excited for November 30th as I am for this book to finally be out in the world and for everyone to experience it I am so so excited uh I will most likely be rereading this um after I reread Jade War again <laughs> um but yeah that is it for today um if you watched all the way till the end 
I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below. Let me know if you have started the series already and um, who your favorite character um, in the Greenbone Saga is. And if you want to see more from me, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Thank you.